Hi, and welcome to Barry Aftercare. I'm Dr. Connie Stapleton, your host and educator, hopefully, about all things Barry Aftercare. So whether you have lost weight with the assistance of weight loss surgery or medical weight loss or however you have lost weight, I am here to help you keep that weight off and give you some education about the mind stuff. So let's get on with today's topic. Our last set of videos was related to self-care and we're going to carry on that topic until, until I feel like I'm finished with it. <laughs> and today, the self-care we're going to talk about is asking for help. As many of us know, that is not an easy task. So many people struggle to ask for help. We don't have any help offering. We don't have any struggle offering our help, but when it comes to asking others to help us, mm, totally different ball game. So what we're going to talk about today are what are the reasons it's so difficult to ask others for help? And there are several of them, most of them, no surprise, related to fear. Then we're going to talk about a few truths, a few nuggets of truth related to this whole topic of asking for help and take a sneak peek into the topics we'll cover later in the week in the Berry Aftercare video, the second one for the week. And that's going to be related to how to ask for help because there's a healthy way to ask for help and there's kind of an unhealthy way to ask for help. And also we'll discuss the benefits to you, the asker of help. What are the benefits of asking for help? We'll get into that. So let's begin with the reasons why it's so darn hard to ask for help. Think about it for just a minute, all right? What are the first things that come to your mind when you think about asking somebody for help? And we're going to put this into the category while you're thinking of that, of self-care, because it really is a very good way to care for yourself by asking somebody to help you when you need help. And self-care, remember, is doing things um, on whatever level it might be. It could be spiritual, it could be financial, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be psychological. And as far as asking for help goes, that could fall into a lot of categories. It could fall into a physical category. If you need somebody to help you do something physically, it could be an emotional category. If you need somebody to help you uh, listen, if you need a listener, boy, what came into my mind just then while I was talking about that was a situation that happened when I was in my early 20s and I needed to reach out and ask for help. And the person that the only person I could think to reach out and ask for help from was a friend who happened to be working at the time I called her. And she suggested that she send her roommate, who I was not real familiar with. But I'll tell you something that experience was really profound for me because I didn't know this girl very well. And emotionally, I felt very, very insecure in relation to this girl. Maybe I'll tell more of that story later, but I think that you can relate to that. And that's one of the fears we have. It's like, I feel insecure and I fear that you might look at me in an unpleasant or an, a not positive in a negative way because I'm asking for help and, you know, I'm not supposed to need help please. That's ego talking. All right. So did you think of some reasons why it's hard for you to ask for help? And if you're like most people, the number one reason that people struggle in terms of asking for help is that we're afraid. Fear gets in the way, even though asking for help is something that would not only serve us, as we'll talk about later, asking for help is oftentimes a win-win because others are very often complimented or like to help. And so when we ask for help, we get help, we help them. But our fear gets in the way. In fact, the biggest reason that people seem to have a hard time asking for help is because of fear. And how silly is this, really? If you think about it, I need help. 
I would appreciate help. It would be great to have help because I could move on in this conundrum that I'm in, but I'd rather stay stuck because I'm afraid to ask for help. Our egos get in the way a lot of times. Now, it makes some sense to me, especially if you've been dealing with the disease of obesity or have had, you know, struggles related to weight, because that oftentimes puts people in a really vulnerable position anyway. So to take another step toward vulnerability and asking for help, I get it. I understand that it can be very fearful. And the reason I was afraid to ask for help in that particular situation that I was in was because I already knew I was in a bad situation and that I had put myself in that bad situation. And I am not saying that about if you're carrying extra weight. I am absolutely not saying you put yourself in a bad situation. The situation that I had put myself in is I was dating a guy, this was in college, and he was not a very pleasant person when he drank. And he had a drinking problem and he was escalating in terms of the signs of being abusive. So I had put myself in that situation. Most of the people around me knew that I had chosen to stay with this guy. And so reaching out for help was really hard for me at that particular time because <laughs> I already felt bad. And I had put, I knew I had put myself in a bad situation. And so I really felt guilty about asking for help. And I was afraid, I was afraid of being embarrassed. I was be afraid of having people say, well, I told you so, all of those things. But here's when people tend to ask for help when they're absolutely desperate. And I was absolutely desperate for help at that moment. And asking for help turned into an amazing gift for me. And I think that many of you could share that same story, that when you asked for help, no matter what you were afraid of or what you were anticipating, hopefully you had something great you could share from that. And what happened for me was this woman, she was my same age, we were in our 20s, she came and, and um, literally, honest to God, I was a puddle of anxiety and fear and tears and absolute hysteria because I had never been in a physically violent situation before. And I had, and, and I did end up leaving the relationship at that time. But this woman who came and helped me, who I was very intimidated by, and she was a sorority girl. And to me, she was beautiful and classy and had everything together. And I was this like totally insecure totally insecure. I was totally insecure and so broken on the inside. And to me, she seemed like she had it all. Well, what I learned when she came and she helped me, and I mean, when I tell you she rocked me like a baby, she rocked me like a baby. And she told me about a similar situation she had been in herself earlier in her life. And I was shocked but what I learned was that we don't know what other people have been through. And it was a way of bonding that we would never have had, had I not reached out for help and had she not been willing to come and aid me. So it really turned into a beautiful sharing. We weren't best friends after that, but it was a really beautiful experience to me in terms of not judging other people, because I had judged her as being so much better than me. And it's not that she was better or worse or anything. We're all, we're all of equal value as human beings. But it brought us together. And I understood that I don't have a right to judge somebody as being perfect and wonderful. I don't know where they came from. Nor do we have a right to judge anybody based on weight or baldness or, you know, whatever. Like we've talked about in the past, right? We don't have the right to judge other people because we don't know. We don't know. Anyway, back to the lesson about asking for help. I was very, very vulnerable. And I think when we're really, really, I felt desperate. And so sometimes when we're desperate, we ask for help. But let's learn to ask for help when we're not feeling desperate. And let's look at the fears that get in our way and see if they're ego-driven 
or if we would be better off using our logic and saying, that doesn't really make much sense here. Would I rather suffer or ask for some help, right? There's no reason, no logical reason not to ask for help. So we can confront our fear, right? And say, this is an ego thing. I would rather get some help and not let my ego get in the way. That's what a healthy adult would do. So part of the whole thing that I like to educate about is helping us become better overall human beings in every area of our life. So being the best healthy adult we can be means we set aside our ego sometimes and say it's not worth it to try to put on this air or this image like I got it all together. But we fear, we fear rejection. And again, as I said a few minutes ago, it's understandable, right? As a person who's carried weight and has been judged and rejected for no other reason than the size of your body, it makes sense to me that you do have your guard up. And it's scary to put that down, maybe inviting additional hurt into your life. That's not a fun place to be, right? So you don't know. There's this whole area of, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'll be ridiculed, rejected, made fun of, discarded, dismissed. And I don't need any more of that in my life. God knows that's happened enough, right? So that makes sense to me if somebody struggled with their weight for a long time, that they would have those misgivings. But as a person who's working to grow in every area of your life to become the best healthy adult you can be, we, re we recognize, accept that we've been hurt before. And we ask other people, maybe a mentor or somebody we trust, Maybe we're not asking that person for help, but maybe we're asking them, would this be a situation that would be reasonable for me to ask for help? Or do you think, you know, let me just talk this through with you. Do you think that I'm putting myself out there for more hurt? Or have that conversation with yourself, right? Or a good friend. And I know it making no sense in my head because why wouldn't you be going to that friend for help or whatever? But let's just say, for logic's sake, that we're going to ask somebody, we're going to process this with somebody. Or maybe it's our friend who lives far, far away and they're not in a position to help us. Somehow I needed to make that make sense. I don't know what that is. All right. So people are afraid of rejection, right? I'm afraid they're going to say no. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. People are afraid maybe of overstepping right? I don't want to ask that person because, you know, I might be bothering them and God knows I don't want to bother anybody else. Question. Do you feel bothered when you're asked for help? Maybe the answer is yes. Sometimes maybe the answer is no. Maybe the answer is, you know what? I like to be asked for help. Makes me feel needed and wanted and important. And the truth is that's the case for most people. Mm, giving away the good stuff here. Some people are afraid if they ask for help, they're going to seem needy. Oh my God, I don't want to seem needy. I want to look like I have it all together, which goes into the next fear of people not seeing us as perfect, right? Maybe, maybe we have this whole facade that I don't need help. I've got it all together. I have this whole perfection thing going on. And maybe it's to protect myself. Maybe my image of perfection is a self-protection, which is usually the case, right? It's a, I don't want to be hurt. So I'm going to come across as being perfect. Well, A, as we know, perfection doesn't exist, but we don't want people to find out we don't want people to find out we're not perfect. Oh my God, that's the worst thing that could happen, right? It's kind of like the imposter syndrome. And you've probably heard of the imposter syndrome, which happens to the majority of people when they go into higher education. They go into a PhD program or medical school or nursing school or whatever it is. It's like, I don't want people to find out that I'm not supposed to be here. This is the place where, you know, people who are smart go, not people like me. I just got lucky. So we, you know, we don't want people to find out 
that we have imposter syndrome. We want people to think we're perfect. And we want people to think we think we have it all together, even though we don't always. And this can be a real problem for people struggling with weight because it's not a secret to a lot of us that when we struggle with weight, we struggle with that all or nothing thinking. I'm going to do the diet every day or not at all. I'm going to go to the gym every day or not at all. So I'm going to be, if I'm not perfect, then the opposite of that with the all or none thinking is I'm awful. So we don't want to feel awful. We want to feel, we want to hold on to this perfection because it protects us from the reality that we're flawed. We're not perfect. But here's the healthy version of that. I don't need to be perfect. It's okay for me to be flawed. So as we work toward being a healthier adult, and as we work toward maintaining that healthy weight, we want to become a healthier thinking person. So we want to scrap that all or nothing thinking. For example, when it comes to food, you know what? I didn't do, I didn't follow my food plan today, but I can jump back on at whatever point in the day we're at. And I can, you know, get right on, right back on track now and follow it into tomorrow. I don't have to wait till next Monday. It's not an all or nothing proposition. Sometimes I need help. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes asking for help is a great example of caring for myself. So if you're struggling with perfection, as many of you are, because A, I've lived it. B, I've worked with a lot of you over the last 17 years, and I know perfectionism is a problem. So learning to ask for help can be a teeny tiny step away from this false need to present yourself or to believe yourself to be perfect because you're not. All right. You don't need to be. It's good not to be perfect. All right. So back to this fear, this fear of being seen for not being perfect, this fear of overstepping or being an imposition to somebody. Think about this for a minute. All right. When you think about asking somebody from help, for help, you're probably thinking, gosh, you know, there's a lot of effort into helping me. Maybe it's helping you move or maybe it's helping you um, figure out how to sign up for a loan or free medications, or free vitamins to a vitamin company for financial hardship. Or maybe it's, you know, just something, maybe it's moving furniture. Or, you know, maybe, oh my God, God forbid, moving your whole entire apartment or house. But you're thinking about, this is a lot of effort to ask somebody else who's going to have to be helping me. Or maybe you're thinking about, oh, nobody wants to help move furniture or nobody wants to help me figure out how to use this program on the computer. It's time consuming. It's, it's a lot of effort for that person. They take time out of their lives. And that it can also play into the fear of they're going to think I'm not very smart because for the life of me, I can't figure this out on this computer. I swear I have spent hours trying to do it, but I just can't get it. I don't want them to think I'm not intelligent enough and I'm already feeling unintelligent. So, you know, they'll probably think the same thing. Or maybe you know how busy that person is or how annoying it might be for them to help you. And so, it makes you sure they're going to say no. And that's one of the biggest fears, right? Having asked for help and hearing no, because it feels like a major rejection. And for those people who have struggled with the disease of obesity, they know what rejection feels like. They know what it feels like to be rejected socially. They know what it feels like to be rejected for no merit. People might think they're unintelligent. People might think they're lazy. People might think they sit around and eat all the time simply based on their size. And you and I know that a lot of that is not true. So there's that fear of rejection. There's the fear that if I put myself out there and ask for help, I'm just asking for more rejection. But here's the truth about being asked for help. Most people really buy into the idea that good people are helpful and they want to be seen as good pe- people, a good person. 
And so a lot of people don't like to say no to a request for help, right? Maybe it plays on their ego a little bit, or maybe it plays on their desire to be liked by you. Just like we want to be liked and appreciated by other people. Research actually shows us that people who have rejected you in the past, check this out, are actually more likely to help you out in the future because maybe they feel guilty that they couldn't have helped, that helped you when you asked them in the past. Or maybe they feel like, gosh, this person's come to me again. I don't want to let them down or I don't want to make them feel rejected or I, you know, I want to feel beneficial to them. It's a little interesting tidbit of research that I did not know. And here's the other thing. If people do say no, and this is really important, I don't know how long you've been listening to the bariatric care videos, but I know a long time ago I talked about a book called The Four Agreements. And one of the agreements, a way to live life by, these are ways to live your life successfully, is not to take things personally. So if you ask somebody for help and they say no, you don't have to catastrophize it. It doesn't have to be an awful thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I put myself out there. They were just, oh my. It doesn't have to be that. Let's balance our emotions, which says, oh my God, they rejected me with logic. Maybe the story you're creating in your head about why they said no has nothing to do with you. Maybe they had plans with their family. Maybe they already had a prior engagement. Maybe they didn't have the resources to be able to help us at the time. Maybe it had nothing to do with you, the asker. What it does give us is the information that this person is unavailable. Now I don't have to waste my time begging, pleading, asking again. And I can move on to somebody else. We tend to, and again, I understand that when you've suffered from the disease of obesity and you've been rejected many, many times for reasons that have nothing to do with you, it's hard not to take things personally. So I do understand that and have compassion for that. But as a person who's working to become a healthier adult, do we have the time to indulge ourselves? Is it healthy for us to indulge our story our story? Is it to indulge ourselves with stories that we make up? We're making a lot of assumptions. We're putting a lot of non-factual information into something we may not have any idea about. So if they tell us they're busy, let's take it for face value. They're busy. They can't help us. Instead of making up a story, creating a narrative that says, they don't like me. I'm unworthy. Why would they want to help me? I'm so, you know, and I know that's something a lot of us do to, do to ourselves. And I want to reemphasize that you do it to yourself by making things up. So take people at face value. If they tell you no, take it as no. Don't make up a story that it's about you. Another fear of asking for help is that I'll be seen as weak, unintelligent, or incapable, which I kind of alluded to when I talked about asking for help with the computer. Some people equate being vulnerable, like being vulnerable, asking for help as being weak. But you've heard Brene Brown, you've heard the research that says being vulnerable and asking for help is a real sign of strength. It's a huge sign of courage. It's a sign that says, I want to invite you into my life. And that does take courage, but I'm worth it. If we're afraid to ask people for help, just like other forms of self-care that we talked about, in a way it sends the message, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth asking for your help. I'm not worth your time. That couldn't be further from the truth. You gladly give your time to other people. And sometimes you don't gladly give it, but we'll talk about that in a minute, right? And that could be part of your fear when asking for help. So I'll go there now. Sometimes, and I've heard this from a lot of people, especially those who struggle with their weight, they say yes very often when they want to say no. And it's not just people who struggle with their weight. 
who are people pleasers. A lot of us do this. We don't want to say no because we want people to like us. We want to please other people. We want to be included. We want to be liked, right? So we say yes when we would rather say no. So maybe because you've done that, you ascribe that tendency to somebody else and that isn't fair. So you might want to have a conversation with yourself. Hmm. Is this a matter of me projecting my issues onto somebody else? I'm just saying, you know, you know, they don't really want to help me. They're just saying yes, because, you know, whatever. Is that because you do that? Are you projecting what you do onto somebody else? Next week, we're going to talk about setting boundaries as self-care. And if you constantly say yes when you don't want to, then you're not setting healthy boundaries. You're not engaging in self-care in that way. But we're going to stick with today, which is about asking for help. We don't want to be seen as weak. We don't want to be seen as unintelligent or incapable. Is that what you think of other people when they ask you for help? Absolutely not, I hope, right? If you do, then you're being judgmental. If somebody asks me for help, I'm like, that's not an area of skill for them. Some people are so good at numbers and math. I'm not one of them. So when I ask my daughter, who had a math major in college and happens to be a whiz at math, what's, a per, what's such, a, such a percent of such and such? I don't feel stupid. I say to myself, that's not my area of expertise. And if I wanted to put a whole bunch of energy and effort into it, I could figure it out or learn it. But I don't. I'm, I'm busy with other things. Would you assist me with that? I'm not feeling stupid. I'm like, that's my weakness. That's an area of weakness. Not my only one, but one of them. So it's also a humbling experience. And humbling ourselves gets us out of our ego. Humbling ourselves is being an example of a healthy adult. And when I say humble, I'm not saying talk badly about ourselves. The definition of humility is to say, this is what I'm good at, my strengths, these are my weaknesses. We all have them. So I'm humbly saying, I'm not skilled in this area. Could I borrow your expertise? I value that about you. And who doesn't like to be honored or complimented in that way, right? So remember, asking for help is not a weakness. It takes courage of vulnerability, both really good traits of healthy adult people, all right? Now, a lot of times we do the shooting on ourselves. And I always encourage people, quit shooting on yourself. I should be able to know how to do this. I should be further along in this by now. I'm such an idiot for falling so far behind. Now, what do we know about self-talk? Every time we pound on ourselves, it's being, it's being abusive, right? We're verbally abusing ourselves when we say things like, I'm an idiot. We're being compassionate with ourselves when we say, this is not my strength. I could use some help in this arena. There's a big, big difference. And I really encourage you all the time, let go of the negative self-talk. Don't be emotionally hammering yourself. Do not emotionally abuse yourself or verbally abuse yourself, right? Because those messages are just going to slow you down and suck you into that vortex of a negative spiral. It's not going to go anywhere. The other reason which we've touched on about fearing to ask is the perfectionism and being found out, right? And we compare ourselves. We do that social comparison. We see people being rewarded for doing things on their own. Heck, what do we say to little kids? What do little kids say to us? I can do it all by myself. Oh, what a big girl. What a big boy. You did it all by yourself. And there is something to say for doing things by yourself and asking for help when you need it. So if you ask people to do things for you when you're perfectly capable, Maybe you have become an imposition, and there are a lot of people who do that. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on in the week because nobody wants to be manipulated. Nobody wants to be taken advantage of. Nobody wants to be used. That's very different than wanting to be of service to others. Most of us do want to be of service. Most of us do want to lend a hand and to help in some way. I can't think of anybody who wants to be manipulated. 
So there's a very big difference. And it is a very good thing to be independent, but not completely independent. We want to be interdependent. We want people to ask us. We want to be able to ask other people. We want to be able to rely on other people. We want other people to be able to rely on us. Remember, with most things, there's a continuum. And on one end of the continuum, there's a healthy version of it. On the other end, an unhealthy version. And we're talking about being independent, the value of being independent. On the one end, I'm a rock. I am an island. If you're old enough to remember, I think it's seals and crops, right? And I don't have to ask for anything. I am 100% a rock, an island. I need no help. That's not a healthy human being, let me just tell you. On the other end of the continuum is somebody who needs help with everything. Could you help me, you know, everything? Could you help me with this? Could you help me with that? Could you help me with this? Could you help me with that? I can't do anything on my own. It's not a healthy way to be either. And if you recall, when we talked about the psychological or the emotional got to do becoming someone who takes care of yourself is able to handle your adult responsibilities is an attribute that is shown to be a good precursor for maintaining weight loss. But don't mistake that with not needing help. Do the things you're able to do for yourself, but have the vulnerability and the courage to be a healthy adult and ask for help when you do need it. All right. So here's a couple nuggets of truth, which we talked about that we were going to say, and I've already mentioned this. People want to help. People want to help. You want to help other people. Other people want to help you. Asking for help says, I am worth your time. I am worth your consideration. I am worth your help. Now, also, here's the truth. When we ask for help, we stand a great opportunity to learn something about ourselves. What I learned when I asked that woman, Lori, years ago, I didn't ask her for help. I asked my friend Rhonda, who was unavailable, but who offered to send her friend Lori to help me. And Lori was a great, great help. And what I learned is that I was judging her unfairly. What I learned is that we don't know what other people have been through. What I learned is that it's okay to ask for help. And sometimes help comes in the most unexpected places from the most unexpected sources. And that was a gift for me. And I asked, I've learned to ask for help in a lot of really beneficial ways over the years. All right. So maybe you also may learn that, like I said earlier, that you're the kind of person who says yes when you say no. Maybe you're going to learn that that's not the way it is all the time for other people. So don't ascribe that intention to other people. Practice being vulnerable because vulnerability, like I said, is a skill of a healthy adult. And as we learn and grow in our life, and as we become healthier adults, healthier adults automatically translate to, I'm going to treat myself in healthier ways. Part of which is asking for help. Part of which is following the behavioral got to do and others of the emotional and psychological got to do for losing weight and weight maintenance. After all, that's what this is all about, right? But it's going to be impossible to continue to work on ourselves in healthy ways if we don't become healthier versions of ourselves. So all the work that you're going to hear me talk about is becoming a healthier version of yourself in some way, shape, or form, and applying that healthier version of yourself to your weight loss journey. So practice being vulnerable. Practice that healthy adult skill. And you can apply this in your weight loss journey in many, many ways, which we're also going to talk about later in the week. What are some specific areas where you need to ask for help or where you may need to ask for help? And then you can apply what we talked about today. Is it fear of rejection? Is it fear of being needy? Is it fear of not looking perfect? Is it fear of risking vulnerability? What is it about for you? Is it a fear of coming across as being perfection and maintaining this perfectionism? Is it a fear of, I don't, 
of needing anybody else. You can figure out what that is, but I'm going to encourage you this week to do some asking of help from somebody else. So as you learn to engage in the self-care act of asking for help, not only are you practicing being vulnerable, but you are re assuming responsibility in life. If I need help, then I need to ask for it. And maybe you weren't taught healthy communication skills about how to go about asking for it. And clearly, there are ways not to go about asking for help, like one of my granddaughters who is a demander. That's not a way for asking for help, but using manners and explaining the situation and being direct about it, those are good ways of asking for help, which we're going to go into much more detail later in the week. Healthy ways not or healthy ways to ask for help and ways definitely not to ask for help. And then we're going to right now take a real quick sneak peek into a topic we're going to elaborate again more on later on in the week. What do you have to gain by asking for help? Well, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and aggravation because whatever it is that's bogging you down that you need help with is going to get done a lot more quickly. And you're going to realize that you're not the only one struggling, as I learned with Lori. And as the person who you asked for help may share with you, you know what? Oh my gosh, I had to ask 10 people for help with this before I finally understood this computer system. I just didn't get it. It took me forever, right? And that'll go a long way in helping you deal with your struggle with feeling unintelligent, right? And you, gave the, you gain the ability to move forward when you ask for help. You have an opportunity to work together with somebody. You may make a new friend. You may make a better acquaintance at work. You may have somebody that now they feel comfortable coming to ask you for help. So it's a win-win in that way. And of course, you have an opportunity to learn. Maybe the person you ask for help from can explain this thing that's been baffling you for a really long time in words that all of a sudden a light bulb goes off for you and you finally get it. So. You can also help serve others. Asking for help is definitely a win-win. People like to help. So you serve yourself by asking and you serve another person by giving them the opportunity to assist you. So let's talk about some take-home messages. It's normal-ish to be afraid for ask, to ask for help. So as we do in the world of recovery, whether it's recovering from obesity or recovering from, I don't know, a rough childhood or recovering from the flu. I don't know what we, one of the things you want to do is feel the fear and do it anyway. So after you have the flu, maybe you're afraid to eat anything, feel the fear and do it anyway. See if you're going to be able to keep it down. When you've struggled to get help from others in the past, feel the fear, take the risk and say, I'm worth it by asking for help. So it's normal-ish to be afraid, but feel the fear and do it anyway. Secondly, learning to ask for help develops the skills of being vulnerable and assuming responsibility for yourself. Take-home message, really important. You want to learn those skills because they help you be a better adult, a better, healthier adult, and it translates into keeping your weight off. Good predictors for weight maintenance taking responsibility for yourself. And you've got to be the one asking for the help if you need it. And number three, asking for help is a win-win. So it's normal to be afraid to ask for help. Asking for help helps you grow into a healthier person and helps you keep your weight off. And it's a win-win. So this week, I'm going to invite you to do a couple of things. Of course, I want you to invite other people to listen to the Berry Aftercare podcast. I want to invite you to ask people to join the Berry Aftercare program, which has a whole host of benefits, including being able to hear the second message of the week. And take a risk this week and ask someone for help each day this week. It could be something really, really non-threatening. Uh, like, could you help me find the pencil sharpener in the office? I just haven't been able to locate one. You don't risk a whole lot by that, right? Or could you remind me uh, 
what hall the elevator is down, something that really isn't going to take a lot from somebody. Or you may say, you know, um, you may call the bariatric office and say, I was wondering if you could uh, help me with the schedule for the support group meetings. Not too big of a risk, right? Or maybe you could show up at the support group meeting and ask somebody, you know, I'm struggling to find a a partner to uh, share menus with. Is there anybody here who would like to do that with me? That's a big ask, right? That's putting yourself out there. But people are looking for the same thing. And remember, when you ask a question at a group or you ask for help in a group, you can pretty much be sure somebody else has been asking the question in their mind as well. So ask for help in some way each and every day. And until we meet again later in the week, remember, we're talking about your health. Your health is your responsibility. When? This day and every day, as you know. So take care, my friends, and I will be excited to meet with you later this week. Bye-bye.